Jonah chapter number 2 uh, for the sake of time this morning I just want to read one verse verse number 9 uh, and give you the thought the Lord has for us this morning if you got it say amen, amen. Jonah chapter number 2 verse number 9 says this he said but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving I will pay that that I have vowed I say there's a lot of people that owe God a lot of things he said I will pay that Why, what, what's he owe he owes something because in his trouble he was telling God Lord I'm going to thank you when I get out of this I will pay that that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord yep. our father we love you this morning and God we thank you for the people of God we thank you for Emmanuel Baptist Church Lord, I mean this, Lord, not to puff these people up by no means. Lord, me and Holly and Brent and Lord, all of us, Lord, was talking about mom, dad, Lord, this week. There's no place in the United States of America like Emmanuel Baptist Church. Lord, since I've been coming, Lord, as a little kid, Lord, these people have always been the same. Lord, they love you. Lord, they love, Lord, people. Lord, they love their guests. Lord, I believe it all attains to, Lord, your man of God that you have here Brother Doug Foster, Lord, I thank you for a man with leadership. Thank you, God, that, Lord, you'll keep a hedge around this church, Lord, around this family. Lord, I pray that God will do something in our days. Lord, I do know, Lord, after you're reading your word, Lord, we don't have much time left. Well, Lord, if you wouldn't, Lord, if you wouldn't mind, Lord, I, for my little boy's sake, and, Lord, even my sake, Lord, I'd love to see you move just one more time. Father, I don't even care where it starts. Lord, started, Lord, wherever. Lord, I want to see, God, you do something big just one more time. Father, if anything gets accomplished today, help us to realize it is 0% man and 100% God. And the church said, Amen. We find Jonah being swallowed up. We find there the last end of verse chapter number 1. In verse number 17, the Bible says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. In Matthew 12, 40 said, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. May I say that fish was a uh, tool in the providence of God to take care of Jonah. Yeah. May I say, ladies and gentlemen, I have seen that fish in my own life. I have seen that fish in other people's lives. Then I want to say by way of introduction, verse number 1 and 2 tells us that there is a fish that is persuasive. A fish that is persuasive. Notice you don't find Jonah in chapter number 1 praying. You don't find Jonah in chapter number 1 when he gets a word from God. Uh, Brother James said, now, Brother Phil, now he wants to pray. But you find when trouble struck, when now his life's out of his control, look at verse number 1 of, of chapter number 2. Then Jonah prayed. And I say this, it's amazing in our lives when we, we just do God any old way we want to. We, brother, we serve God, and we serve God whenever it's convenient, whenever it's comfortable. And Brother Doug, and it, man, our life will seem like it's okay. But then all of a sudden, a fish will come in our lives, and it will swallow you up a hospital visit, a funeral home visit, a bad report from the doctor. All of a sudden, now we want to start praying. Can I say this? I wonder where our churches would be if we would pray before we get into trouble. And I'll be honest with you, that fish had a very persuasive way of changing Jonah's mind. Before you read there in chapter 1, you don't find him praying, he was playing. And can I say this? If you're a truly a child of God, you can play as long as you want to, but God's going to get you Right. Yeah, man, amen. I've seen it way too many times in life. Where, well, man, where people do the whatever they want to. Man, they, they, and then all of a sudden, I love I love these quotes, man. I found, man, the, uh, uh, Bessie Road, I was being assistant pastor, a youth pastor. Brother Christian, I go to the hospitals, and this these people ain't been to church, Brother Josh, and they don't even know the members there. They spend so long. They probably done forgot the pastor's name. You go to them and say, oh, yeah, I'm a member of Bessie Road. Man, they, they tell me, Brother Dunk, say, if I can just get out of this hospital bed, I promise you I'm going to come to the house of God. 
It's amazing to me that that hospital bed has a crazy way of changing somebody's mind. Yeah, man, that hospital bed, that bad doctor's report, all of a sudden now we want to serve God. Can I say this? Let us not get to the place in our life where God has to swallow us up to get our attention. Jonah's now playing, but now he wants to pray. Romans 2, verse number 4, Despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. 2 Peter 2, verse number, chapter 3, verse number 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men account slackness. I like this word, but he's long suffering. Right. Can I say when those dudes chunk Jonah overboard that God, it would have been a loving, just God if he'd let Jonah sink to the bottom. Can I say this God in our life would be a very loving, just God if he didn't let situations come in our life to stop us and to get a hold of our attention and get a hold of our minds. May I say there was a fish that was persuasive but we find in verse number 3 through verse number 6 there is a fish that was preserving Notice there in verse number 3, he said, For thou, notice the, the words here Jonah's speaking. He's in the belly of this well, and he's saying, For thou hast cast me into the deep. In the midst of the seas and the floods come past me about. Notice here he said, All thy billows and all thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy side. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters come past me about even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped around my heads. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet thou hast brought up my life from corruption. O oh Lord my God. Can I say this? Jonah's, well, God's way of protecting Jonah was to let him land in the well's belly. And can I say sometimes in our life, God will wreck our lives so we won't wreck our lives. Sometimes God will let a little bit of tragedy happen in our lives. To, meant not to hurt you and your family, God. Man, well, let that fish swallow you up. That fish's job wasn't to hurt Jonah. That fish's job wasn't to kill Jonah. That fish's job was to preserve Jonah. And can I say sometimes that those hospitals, those funeral homes, those bad reports we get, it's not God up there being mean. It's God being a loving, just God to preserve your life. I've seen a mom and dad pray for their kids and something tragic will happen to mom and dad on the kids' behalf. You know what God's doing? God's letting that well preserve your life to try to be a help to somebody else. I got to be honest with you, I don't like the well. I don't like the well. I don't like when things happen in my life. But can I say this? God does all things well. I promise I'm getting somewhere. You'll find in Psalms 18, verse number 30, ask for God, His way is perfect. I say that's easy to read when you're not going through nothing. That's, that's very easy to read when, 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 man, your home ain't all a wreck. That's very easy to read when your parents ain't suffering through depression. That's real easy to read, Preacher Doug, when nothing's happening in your life. But can I remind you, this past year has probably been one of the worst years of my life. For Brother Aaron, I come across that verse, and every single day of every single last year, that verse is standing true today. As for God, God's way is perfect. Can I remind you, God, don't make no mistakes. God, don't let the heads down just to be me. God don't allow things in our life because you don't love us As everything God does is perfect every hospital visit God allows us to go through it is a perfect visitation from the Holy Ghost of God as for God you say preacher I'm in it tonight this morning preacher I'm in it preacher I don't know what's going on can I remind you God's way is perfect Good. Can I say it's easier said than done? 
It's easy to say God's way is perfect when nobody's hurting in your family. There's been nights these past year, man, me and Miss Taylor would cry our eyes out. I'm talking about we poured it on the Lord. Brother Aaron, I, I started thinking, well, God, I don't think this, this is your way is perfect. But you know what I come to find out? Through all that mess, God's way is so perfect. Can I say God didn't make a mistake last year? God didn't fail us. God didn't leave us. God's way is is perfect it's flawless See, preacher don't understand what I'm going through I don't have to only thing I can tell you is what the Bible says God's way is perfect that well was perfect can I say Jonah was very thankful for the well you'll find where in Psalms 32 verse number 7 he said thou art my hiding place thou shalt preserve me from trouble thou shalt compass me about with the songs of deliverance, Selah. Can I say, Jonah could say, God's way is perfect. Psalms 121, verse number 7 and 8, The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth even forevermore. Can I say this, ladies and gentlemen, if God would have let Jonah be drowned in the bottom of that ocean, God still would have been a faithful, loving, just God. I wrote this down and man God gave me this I hope it helps you when God had Jonah at his mercy he showed him mercy can I say that again when God had Jonah at his mercy he showed him mercy you say preacher that don't do nothing for me but may I say this there's been many a times along this way since I was 16 years old got saved there's been many a times brother Peter I failed man I fought I made a mess of my life since I've been saved I've done things y'all don't look at me so crazy you know what I'm talking about there's things that go across your mind man there's things God could have wrote me off into hell but aren't you thankful we got a God who loves us in spite of what we done in spite of who we are in spite of the sin I make I'm glad I have a God man that is long suffering to me I'm glad when I go to God and I pour it out on God and say God I'm so sorry for making a mess of my life God I'm so sorry I shouldn't have done that can I say I'm glad God don't say well boy that's your last strike you're out of here I'm glad he opens the arms of God God. I'm glad he forgives. I'm glad he forgives. And can I say there's been times I rightfully deserve hell when I was at God's mercy. I'm glad he showed me mercy in my life. There's times being a Phillips kid growing up. I'll be honest with you, my dad would have been a just father if he would have grabbed my stuff, Brother Peter, and he would have chunked it out in the yard and burned it. There's been times of things I've done to ruin my mom and daddy's name. There's been times I could have drove up in the yard, Brother Jordan, and my stuff be on fire. And can I say my dad would have been in the right to kick me out because I ruined his great name. I made a man a mockery of, of the Phillips name. But can I say not one time have I ever drove up 118 Landish Road, easily South Carolina, 29642, uh, in the mess. Man, I tell you, I was so rebellious as a kid. Man, I drive up, I was, I was saved, but I was rebellious. I'd drive up in that yard uh, knowing I just done some things I know I shouldn't have done uh, and guess what I still had a roof over my head uh, I still had clothes on my back uh, I still had shoes on my feet uh, preacher what you saying my dad had every right to throw me out uh, but I'm glad my father didn't throw me out when I messed up uh, some of you this morning you deserve hell we all deserve hell just for the things you done yesterday uh, but you woke up this morning and you found that is mercy mercies are new every morning can I say I'm glad I serve a long suffering God I know that don't do nothing for y'all but I know the mess I've been in I know the very things I've done God should have kicked me off into hell but I sure am glad God shows me mercy we deserve hell we deserve to be cast off but God shows us mercy in our life can I say this morning if you've done things that, that you know aren't right aren't you very thankful that God still shows you mercy Jonah said I want my will to be done and guess what God is still showing him mercy 
There is a fish that was persuasive. There is a fish that was preserving. May I say this? Verse number 10. There is a fish that was persistent. That fish was going to do what that fish was called to do. The Bible does say that there was three days that Jonah was in the whale's belly. And I say sometimes our fish don't last three days, it lasts months. Sometimes it lasts years. I don't know what you're going through, but sometimes those whales, man, it seemed like this past year was a whale. Man, the whole year just seemed like, man, it was covered up. I don't know the timeline God has allowed for your well in your life, but what I'm telling you this, that well is going to do the job God has called it to do, and it's not going to stop until it's done what God asked it to do. I say sometimes you might have to go through some things for a little while. God has the timeline on the well. May I say that that fish did exactly what God commanded him to do. It's amazing to me that that fish didn't spit him out in the water. You look there in verse number 10. And the Lord spake unto the fish. I've got to be honest with you. At my house, when uh, I know like every home, y'all fight. Somebody help me right there. Some of you men scared. Don't start that with me. Come on. Anybody ever fight? I mean, not, my dad's always three people. Say amen. Y'all got some good marriages up here. Y'all never had no problems. Me, me and Taylor, we get in a little bit of arguments, just a little bit. Say amen. Just a little bitty arguments. And man, we'll, man, we will go through a little moment where we don't talk to each other for a couple, couple minutes. I know y'all don't do that, but that we do. Say amen. It's my daddy's fault. Praise God. I'm a Phillips. I like to have my way or the highway. Say amen, man. Man, I get in there, man, it'll get quiet around the house, and I'll be honest with you, I don't like quiet. I don't like it. I like loud, say amen, Carter. I like loud, screaming babies. Say amen. Man, we, we'll go through there, and we don't talk for a little while, and i got to be honest with you, when it's time to make up, and, we, we, I'm, and the men, I hate even doing this, I'm sorry. Somebody, me, and say amen right there. My dad told me a long time ago, that's the best two words to learn. I'm sorry. Say amen. I go to Miss Taylor and we, we're about mate, me, you know, we're meeting in the middle and we, we both look at I'm sorry. We say it together. I love when that happens. Say amen. That don't make me feel too bad. Brother Aaron, we'll get there and I'll say, I'm sorry. And I got to be honest with you, I'm sitting here telling her what, what I've done wrong and all this. And if she starts talking to the wall or gets on her cell phone and calls somebody while I'm sitting there trying to talk to her, I'm going to be a little mad. Don't you think about Jonah. He is sitting here for six or seven verses pouring his heart out to God. I mean, he's just pouring, God, I, Lord, you, you, man, you got to help me out of this. God, I'm in a mess. I don't know what in the world I'm going to do. God, you got to help me. I want you to look at verse number 10. And the Lord spake unto I'm pouring it out. God, I'm giving you out. In other words, God is talking to the fish and he's not talking to Jonah. You know what I've learned in my life? Sometimes when God ain't speaking to us, he's speaking through the thing that he's working on us to get through. There's times in my life I, I wish I could hear from God. All because God ain't speaking don't mean he ain't talking to something or someone. Look there, Jonah's pouring it out. And that fish, and God said, I'm going to speak to the fish instead of Jonah. Yeah. Now, to be honest, if I'm Jonah, I'm waiting on a response from God. Yeah. One guy, man, said this, Jonah had two ways to get out of that well. Mouth or the other end. Somebody say amen. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, I, I choose the mouth. Somebody help me right there. That's just the long suffering of God. Say, preacher, I don't know how I'm going to make it through. I'll tell you how. You're going to be all right. Sometimes it takes a little time. You know what I've learned this past year? Sometimes God takes his time. Sometimes God will let you and your family go through little seasons. Little seasons. I'm not talking about one season, two seasons. I'm talking about a year, two years. Seems like nothing's happening. Seems like God ain't speaking to you. But you know what? God's just speaking to the thing that's holding you. Can I say this? I'd rather God, I'd rather God speak to the thing that's holding me than God be quiet altogether. 
Jonah's head. He said, man, could you imagine him speaking? And all of a sudden, the regurgitation happens. Somebody say amen. Without man being a new daddy Christian, I've learned this. Spit up happens a lot. Say amen. We'll get him cleaned up. Man, we'll get Carter looking all spiffy. And all of a sudden, the spit, the vomit. Somebody say amen. I like that word. The throw up. Say amen. That stuff starts pouring out. You got to change clothes and do all this stuff. I want you to get this now. Be Imagine that Jonah is now spit up, vomited on the beach. He gets spit up and the Bible says there was weeds. I'm talking about this dude was in a mess. I'm talking about a bad mess. We dreamt around. I'm talking about a disgusting mess. I, I don't like fish, but I like going to Red Lobster and I like getting a shrimp. Somebody help me there. And then biscuits. Praise God. Man, them things going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Those things are delicious. Man, you go there, man. I, don't, I can't stand the smell of fish. I can't stand it. I don't even like being around it. It's just nasty to me. But could you imagine being puked out, vomited on the beach, and the smell that Jonah had? It's probably worse than Carter's diaper. Say amen. I'm talking about nasty. He's, he's getting up off the, off the sand, and I can see, man, just the, the juice. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about nasty mess. I'm talking about nasty. So I'm talking about gross. I'm talking about weeds were wrapped around his head. He spit up, and I believe he's almost like Lazarus trying to, trying to get that stuff off of him. He, he's looking around and smelling. One guy said those gastric juices could have changed his skin. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I'm telling you, Jonah was in a mess. He's in a mess. But you know what he started doing the very first thing he'd done when he was in a mess? I said all that to say this. He started blessing. Can I tell you this morning on how you can bless in a mess? I don't know none of y'all been in no mess, but I'm telling you what I've learned this past year. The world will chew you up and it will spit you out and it will leave you in a mess. Can I say some very dear friends of mine, Preacher Doug, will, man, they'll, they'll be there when everything's good and all of a sudden they'll change and they'll turn on you and they will leave you in a mess. Right. But can I be honest with you, if, if, I, if I was going to quit because of people, this would have been the year I'd have done it. I would have said bye because there's been a lot of people along the way who said, hey man, you can trust me, you can confide in me. I know y'all don't have people like that, but then they turn their back and they run away from you and they're gone. If, if I was in this thing for people, honey, I'd have been a gone a long time ago. If it was for people calling me, uh, and man, saying out of boys and good jobs, I'd have been a long time ago. Uh, but there's one thing I've learned. Uh, no matter how big the mess is, uh, no matter how big it is, uh, no matter if people walk out of your life, if friends leave you and they lie to you and they leave you in a mess, I'm glad I can still stand before you today in the mess we was in last year and I can still bless his holy name in the midst of the mess I have. You say, preacher, how do I bless in a mess? Look with me at verse number 7. And he said, when my soul fainted within me. He didn't say his body. He didn't say his mind. He said his soul. And I say there's been times when my mind gets tired. Anybody ever been there just physically exhausted in the mind? Maybe you've been there in the body. You just really didn't even, me and Taylor got, got there a few weeks ago. We didn't even want to get out of bed. Somebody say amen. Just physically and mentally exhausted. The ways of the world are on you. Everything's come upon you. And your mind just can't take no more. You wish you could just reach up there and press a button and turn the mind off so you don't have to think about all the bad no more. Jonah said it wasn't my mind that was exhausted he didn't say my body it was exhausted look what he said there in verse number 7 he said when my soul that deep part of man that 
part when I was in the fish's belly man could you see it that fish going up and down oh Jonah said there's been I feel a preach coming on he said there's been times eh, man I was going up and down in that fish's belly there's been times I, I thought I was going to die there's been times when I just wanted to throw up the flag of surrender there's been times I, I wish God would have just went ahead and taken me home he said there's been times eh, man in the low spot out of that belly he said in the belly of hell I'm talking about a low spot I'm talking about when you can't smile there wasn't no smiling going on in the fish's belly I'm sure there was a lot of tears going on I'm talking about Jonah it's in a mess I'm talking about Jonah man probably can't even sleep Jonah's just going up and down Jonah said man I just want to give up and can I say this past year there's been times I've wanted to give up. Don't look at me so spiritual this morning. There's times in your life, man, when the waves get over your head and you feel like there's no end to it. It just seems like it just keeps going. It just keeps going and it just keeps going. It seems like the bad train keeps on passing by your house huh? and the bad stuff keeps piling in. Huh? You get more bad news. Huh? You just get your head afloat all of a sudden some bad news comes in huh? and can I say your soul gets faint. Huh? There's been days I'd walk into church huh? y'all don't look at me so crazy I'm telling you my heart. There's been times preacher I'd grab the pulpit huh? I didn't even want to feel like preaching you know what I did? I went and done what God's called me to do. I left so defeated. I'd go home and I'd cry like a little baby. I said, God, man, what's the point of going on? God, I know I'm trying my best to serve you. I was just like Jonah. I was going up and down. But I didn't know when it was going to end. There's been times I've wanted to give up. Don't you look at verse number 7. He said, when my soul fainted within me, when I wanted to give up, when I just wanted to throw it in, look what Mr. Jonah did. Look there, he remembered some things. Uh-oh. What did he remember? Look at verse number seven. He said, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. I don't know about y'all. I don't know about y'all up here in Kentucky, but God has blessed my socks off. I'm talking about God has been very, very, very good to me. There's been nights, man, these, these past few months have been a little better. There's been nights, preacher, I'd wake up, man, I'd feel so discouraged. I'd feel so overwhelmed. All of a sudden, somebody comes and knocking at my heart's door. It's the Holy Ghost. Anybody ever have that happen to you? Holy Ghost comes by my heart. Over there at 247 Pinnacle Crossing, he crawls up in the bed with me and he says, boy, don't you remember what I've done for you? I'm talking about, man, I'm low. I don't know how I'm going to make it another mile. Brother Phil, all of a sudden, the little wheel starts to turn in the big wheel. I start looking back over the blessings of God. Can I say, I could have been born in a third world country somewhere, but I was born in the United States of America to a mom and dad who loved God. I could have been born in a drugs home. I could have been born in a pot smoker's home. I could have been born in a whole lot worse home than what I was. Uh, you know what I start redoing? I start remembering what the Lord's done for me. Uh, man, growing up, uh, I wasn't grown up in a bar. I didn't grow up in some crazy nut house. I was grown up in the house of God. Uh, man, there's kids today. Uh, they don't know what it is to be like sitting inside the house of God. Uh, I'm just talking about some things I remember. I remember growing up. Uh, I remember leather lung men of God uh, preaching the word of God. Uh, I remember that August 6th on a Wednesday night uh, boy I got on my face before God uh, I said God I don't know why in the world you would save me Lord I pray you'll take me just as I am I trust you I'm just talking about some things I remember on that November 1st that Sunday night uh, I'll never forget the call of God come to my life uh, all of a sudden that moment I, man, I got dad I got my dad I said dad God wants me to preach he said, you're crazy. I still think I am. Somebody say amen. I'm just talking about some things I remember. I remember, man, when my money couldn't even pay the bills. God paid for them. 
I'm talking about when, when you're just about to go under. Look what he did. He said he remembered the Lord. He said it was special. He said, I remembered. Can I say, I said all those things. Some of you looking like a little crazy. That don't do nothing for you because it's special. It's mine. It's mine. Some of you, God has blessed you and been so very good to you. You look down the job God's gave you, it's from God. The very house you have is from God. The very car you drive is from God. And can I say, when you're starting to get in the moly grubs, just remember what God's done for you. Not for your wife, not for no. I wonder how many people today, without the grace of God, would be sitting here. I'm glad God saves old sinners. I'm glad God reached for down than I could reach up I'll never feel the flames of hell why because I got saved by the grace of God Amen. can I say this you can remember those things right. they become special to you he said I remembered notice where he put the spotlight yeah. he said I remembered the Lord yeah. I've had some very very dear people in my life to man just, just be good to us very good to us there's nothing like when the Lord does something for you. I'm talking about those wee midnight hours when you think you can't wake up no more, when you think you just want to leave this earth and the Holy Ghost comes by. I know none of y'all ever had those times, but Brother Jordan, there's been times these past year, man, I really just wanted to give up, Preacher Doug. This, it's hard, man. This, this Christian life, it's not easy. Somebody say amen to that. It's not easy serving God, but it's the best life we can ever choose from. There's been times, man, I'd wake up. Uh, man, I just want to throw it up. I wanted to throw in the towel. I wanted to be done. And the Holy Ghost come by. He'll start knocking on my heart's door. He said, boy, look beside you. Uh, you got a wife. I sent you finally. Somebody say amen. Now I got a little boy. I can hold in my arms. Uh, can I say I don't have no gripes this morning I'm not talking about how bad of a year I had it what I'm telling you is through the bad year through the mess I've been in uh, I can look at that little boy I'll be having a bad day I grab his little lip like that that smile will come across I'm talking about all my depression leaves all my trouble leaves why because God has been so good to this boy I don't deserve nothing I have today I don't deserve nothing and God just keeps on pouring it out I'm just talking about pouring it out. Oh, man, I mess up my life. Huh? Man, I make a mess of my life. And God just says, it's okay, boy. Let me just pour some more out. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm glad we have a God. I'm glad God blesses on Monday. I'm glad God blesses on Tuesday. I'm glad God blesses on Wednesdays. I'm glad God blesses on Thursdays. I'm glad God blesses on Fridays. I'm glad God blesses on Saturdays. And sure enough, I'm glad God pours his blessings out. I'm glad glad if it wasn't it up for God hadn't it been for the Lord uh, who was on my side uh, you look at today you are blessed today uh, you say preacher I don't have much uh, preacher I'm in a mess and can I say right in the middle of your mess you're still blessed Jonah said I remembered it was special there was the spotlight notice the service he did look at the service now he said and my prayer came in unto thee the Holy. He was in a mess. <clears throat> you know what he was still doing? Still praying. It's amazing to me, people get in a mess and they stop. And I say the best thing you can do when you're in the middle of your mess, keep on praying. I'm almost done. Look there, there's Jonah remembered. Ladies and D.L. Moody said this, he who kneels the most stands the best. Billy Sunday said, if you are strangers to prayer, you are strangers to power. Yeah, right. Say, preacher, I'm in a mess. Preacher, I'm in a mess. God reminds you, keep on praying. Right. Jonah remembered, Jonah reminds us, verse number eight. He said, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Here's what he's saying there. He said, you can do your own will, but you're going to pay for it. Right. Can I say this this morning? You can do your own will, but you're going to pay for it. Jonah remembered, Jonah reminds, I want to say this, Jonah reimburses. Look at verse number nine. But I will sacrifice unto thee with, uh, say this word with me, voice. 
let's, let's say that word again with the voice some of you quiet folk let's say it one more time with the voice say preacher you're loud this morning don't get beside of me when we get to heaven don't do it I'll be honest with you these preacher these superficial Christians there they're real quiet and real, I mean if you're that way praise the Lord I want to be right beside you when we walk into that gate I believe there's going to be a lot of people there ain't no way you're going to be reserved when you get to heaven can I be carnal for a moment we'll, we'll, we'll go to football games we'll go to football games I know y'all don't like sports up here I know that sorry Bengals somebody say amen you get up here amen sports well y'all ever go, go watch it on TV ever watch it on TV y'all don't scream at the refs right y'all yeah, don't do that up here Back when I used to watch Clemson football, man, I'd scream, I'd, I'd punch the TV, I'd get mad. Y'all y'all help me, y'all pray for me there. Talking about I, I'd get into, y'all don't, if you go watch it, might as well just get in. I mean, just yes. jump in, get all in. Act like you're right there screaming, eating popcorn. Say amen. I'm talking about getting all in. Well, get man, my little nephew, Parker, now, y'all y'all probably, y'all seen him last year, I believe. He, he's huge. I'm talking about a monster. Greta's little boy, he's probably about right here, nine, nine years. I cannot believe it. He's a, he's a monster. Mean as a snake, he's a monster. I'm a, all the stuff I've done to him, Greta said, I'm going to reap worse. Say amen. I'm in bad trouble. Bad, bad, bad trouble. Parker, man, that they used, when he started playing football a couple years ago, man, that helmet was bigger than his whole body. They get the little pads on and they act like they bad to the bone. But as soon as you say hut, they're going in the opposite direction. Say amen. Man, well, I, watched, I watched one day. I just sat back and watched. If you want to learn some stuff, just be quiet and watch. So I sat back there. We was in the stands at Easley High School. We had a little championship game. All them little kids, just 12 on 12. I'm out there out there. They have no idea what they're doing, but it's so funny. It's so funny. They say hunting them kids are going this way and way for the mom. You don't know what I'm talking about? Out there doing flips. And one guy, her, his cousin was over there. He was over there taking a nap on the sideline. Supposed to be in the football game. There's a lot of preaching that. Say amen. He was over there, many of them kids. I, I'd watch grandmas that went in there on wheelchairs. Hear me now. Went in there on wheelchairs, preacher. She would grab the back of that, that, that stand. She'd pull her. Woo! She'd go back down. I'm getting somewhere. I'm, I'm, we almost done because I'm probably about to kill it right here. Say amen. I watched Papa's getting there real quiet and reserved. Brother Christian now, he, whoa, that's my grandson, whoa. Mamas and men, Scott and April Cersei, he got them big old cowbells, he'll ring that thing. April, she's over there jumping on the referee, say amen. Man, Scott's, whoa, that's my boy, whoa, go, 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 go. We come to church. That football don't go the right way in the end zone. We come to church. God blessed us. God's been very good to us. Sit like a knot on the log. I'll be honest with you, I've, I've determined a long time ago. Long time ago. People can think I'm loud. People can think I'm crazy. But if we can shout for a football, a piece of pig skin flying through the air, if we can sit and man, we can shout for that little orange thing going through the hoop, we can shout for all that. Surely to goodness, we can shout for the goodness of God. Surely, I'm talking about, I've been in a mess this past year. I'm talking about a big mess. But you know what I've come to, oh my God, you know what I've come to find out? I start a blessing God. God starts a blessing in me. You say, preacher, I'm, I'm just real quiet and reserved. Can I say, I want you to go home today. I want you to go in your bathroom. I want you to turn the lights off. Shove a pillow underneath your door. I want you to put a piece of curtain over the window. I want you to grab a little paper and start writing down the blessings of God. Everything God's been good to you. I'm talking about the air you breathe, the car you drive, the tires that's on the car, the brakes that's on the car. Man, the transmission fluid that's not gone out. Somebody say amen. I promise you before too long man, them happy bubbles start a popping in your soul. There's something started stirring in your soul. God, remember
remind you I don't care how bad your day is it doesn't matter how bad your years been God has still been a very good God uh, and can I say God does not owe me nothing God never has to do another thing for my household uh, I stand here amazed uh, I can go home today uh, I can open that pantry there's food uh, there's some fruit loops up there on the top shelf with marshmallows somebody say amen there's some corn pops in there uh, there's some spaghettios with meatballs somebody say amen I can go to that freezer I can pull it out there's some frozen pizzas we do them cheap vegetables say amen those frozen vegetables I can open that freezer there's some beef there's some chicken you say preacher what are you saying here's what I'm saying I am a blessed man this morning I can go up those steps I got a big old nice king bed to sleep in I don't have to live under a cardboard box I don't have to live I don't drive a Ford Pinto God has blessed me God has blessed me with a wife boy that loves me that wants to serve I that don't do nothing for y'all but it's a doing something in my soul boy God has blessed me I got a wife that loves me even though sometimes I get a little crazy some of you men say amen boy she just keeps on loving me boy God's blessed me with a boy right in the middle of the worst year I've ever had God's gave me one of his greatest blessings boy I go grab that little Kai boy I can lift him up and just smile he has no idea what I'm saying to him here's what I'm telling you I am blessed I am blessed I am blessed even on the worst days of my life I am blessed in the middle of a mess if I say this and I'm done preacher you come he said I will pay that that I have vowed can I say this this morning some of you oh God a big old thank you did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on daily devotions to sign up today and as always thanks for listening